for, about uh, Connect SA. And I'd, I'd be interested to just give us a brief description of how you're going to do that. Yeah, well, we are working on an integrative strategy that takes all of the different uh, planning uh, elements in place uh, from our land use strategies to our bus routes to our uh, pedestrian pathways, even our, our linear creekway systems, and tries to create an effective and intermodal uh, communication, intermodal transportation system. On top of that, we're looking at uh, developing our first ever advanced rapid transit system. San Antonio is a 500 square mile city fast-growing city. Uh, we have an underfunded bus system that needs to increase frequency, and all the elements in place are the only way we believe we can keep uh, our economic uh, vibrancy and, and be able to meet the demands of moving San Antonians around uh, inside of our city. Okay, thank you. Um, for uh, the uh, Secretary Millar, um, you, you talked about uh, what you were doing to, you couldn't build your way out of it. So what are the tools that uh, we should uh, highlight, incentivize, or create in uh, the next uh, transportation bill that would uh, give people what they need to look at more innovative ways to mitigate congestion? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the question. Uh, yeah, we can't build our way out of congestion. When I was first appointed secretary, I got an email from a constituent, congratulations. By the way, your speed limit signs say 60 miles an hour. I can't drive 60 miles an hour on your freeways. Your agency is a failure. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I thanked that constituent, and I asked, what would it take to be able to drive 60 miles an hour all the time on our freeways? Uh, $115 billion investment. Uh, doing that over 20 years is a $2.50 a gallon gas tax, and that did not accommodate any growth in our region. It didn't accommodate any growth in the local road system and the like. The fact that we cannot build our way out of congestion is not a failure of government. It's just it's a it's an economic and environmental and demographic reality. So we're talking about moving forward in a congested world, and, and that involves first taking care of the system we have in place. So preservation is hugely important to us. We have today in Washington State a seven hundred million dollar a year unfunded preservation backlog. Okay, basically state of good repair. State of good repair. Okay. Then okay. safety. When you, you look at uh, the, the $3.5 billion that uh, impacts our economy, congestion costs our economy in Washington State about $3.5 billion. The deaths and serious injury accidents in Washington State cost our economy $8.5 billion. We talk about congestion all the time. We're not talking about uh, the safety issues on our roadway. So making our transportation safe, system safe is important. Transportation system management and operations, recognizing that if you think about the transportation system that's going to be in place 20 years from now, most of it's there today. But we need to get more throughput out of the system we have through things like express toll lanes, managed lanes, uh, automated transportation management systems, investing in incident response to clear crashes and get, get roads back open. Um, investing in the relationships between land use and transportation so we don't continue to make stupid decisions that necessitate investments that we, we can't afford to make anymore. And, and then, as a last resort, targeted system expansion. Uh, typically, in, in our world, you see a problem, the answer is more. Um, that should be the last thing we do, not the first thing we do. And, and that's the, the progression of decision making that we're making in Washington State. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, and anyway, any suggestions any of you have that are specific to ways federal funds are restricted that don't allow you to do reasonable and take reasonable steps to get better throughput on our, our existing infrastructure would be very welcome uh, in this committee. Uh, and then I, I just want to observe, uh, Mr. Terry, thanks for your testimony about uh, Indianapolis. But uh, when you talked about, and a number of other people have recommended the 55555, five, 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 uh, the fact is, if we do five, 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 uh, it's six and a half years before we increase spending above the current levels, uh, which I think is too long uh, to wait. Uh, we need to be looking at leveraging whatever we do with gas and diesel tax with bonds so that we get that money uh, up front more quickly. Uh, I would observe, and you probably, I don't know how old your bus fleet is, but part of the reason in some places people are abandoning transit is because it's not reliable because it's it's you know, it's worn out. Uh, and just bringing transit up to a state of good repair, I believe, do you agree, would attract a lot of people back to the system? Very much so. The rider experience is, is very important. Our fleet is 44% uh, is past its useful life. 
Uh, so you're exactly uh, correct. State of good repair is extremely important. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um,